Well, everybody, this is Mormon Sedan Tower. I'm Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Monday, February 3rd, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Pop star Shakira and Jennifer Lopez took to the stage during the Super Bowl halftime show on Sunday and belted out some of their better-known hits. The set included the hit songs Whenever, Wherever, and Waka Waka by Shakira, and Wait for Tonight and Love Don't Cost a Thing by Lopez among a slew of their other club anthems. The Latino musicians performed on a circular stage that was elaborately lit as fireworks erupted from the top of the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida. During the performance, Shakira, dressed in a red sequin outfit, performed a belly dance with the rope that led, it, led her into her iconic song, Hips Don't Lie. Then Lopez took to the stage in a black leather outfit while holding on to the antenna of a mock skyscraper while singing her thumping hit about her New York beginnings, Jenny from the Block. She then ran through a melody of her classic tunes as Leonard Don backup dancers performed complex routines. At one point during the show, the pair took to the stage and performed Let's Get Loud together in front of children dancing. Prior to taking the stage, Lopez published a picture of her hugging Shakira to her Instagram account. She wrote, so excited to share the stage with you tonight, Shakira. Let's show the world what two little Latin girls can do. Pepsi announced that Lopez and Shakira were to perform during this year's Super Bowl halftime show in September. In the run-up to the show, Shakira had said their selection was a very important moment for the Latino community in this country. The pair have been now added to the list of iconic musicians who have performed during the event, including Maroon 5, Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga, Coldplay, Katy Perry, Missy Elliott, and more. 1917 was named Best Film and Best British Film at the BAFTA Awards in London on Sunday. Sam Mendes earned the Best Director honor for helming it. The World War I picture also won the awards for Best Visual Effects, Best Sound, Cinematography, and Best Production Design. While Renee Zellweger won the Best Actress Prize for Judy, Joaquin Phoenix picked up the Best Actor Trophy for Joker, Marriage Story Scene Stealer Laura Dern won the Best Supporting Actress Statuette, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood star Brad Pitt earned the Best Supporting Actor Accolade. The Rising Star Award was presented to Michael Ward. Jojo Rabbit scribe Tiki Watiti took home the prize for Best Adapted Screenplay, and Bong Joon Ho won the Best Original Screenplay Prize for Parasite. Klaus was voted Best Animated Movie, and Parasite was deemed Best Film Not in the English Language. Comedian talk show host Graham Norton hosted the gala at the Royal Albert Hall. Joker leads the field with 11 nominations, followed by The Irishman and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, each with 10 nominations. Um, Jojo Rabbit with 6, and Little Women, Marriage Story, and The Two Popes with 5 apiece. Owen Wilson is set to star alongside Tom Hilston in the Disney Plus series Loki. The Hollywood Reporter and ComicBook.com reported the casting news Friday, but to no details about Wilson's character was disclosed. The show will see Hilson reprising his Avengers and Thor movie role of the mischief god Loki. It is one of several Avengers spin-off series the streaming service is working on, including WandaVision, What If, and The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Wilson is a freaking collaborator of filmmaker Wes Anderson, co-starring in The Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Dare Lee Limited, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, and Bottle Rocket. His other credits include Midnight in Paris, When I Crashers, Zoolander, and the Night of Museum franchise. Actress and filmmaker Elizabeth Banks has been crowned Harvard University's Hasty Puddings Theatrical's 2020 Woman of the Year. The Pitch Perfect and Hunger Games star joined members of the Fame College Theater Troupe in a parade through the street of Cambridge, Massachusetts on Friday. Banks was then comically roasted and presented with her pudding pot at Farkas Hall. She later took a performance of the company's musical satire, Mean Goals. Uh, the event's co-producer, Natalie Nito, said when Banks was named earlier this month at this year's honoree, Elizabeth is a role model to all of the young women in the theatricals, especially in a year where a female writer, female producers, and a majority female cast we cannot wait to celebrate and meet her. Other actresses who have won the award include Meryl Streep, 
Julia Roberts, Scarlett Johansson, Anne Hathaway, Kerry Washington, and Bryce Dallas Howard. Saturday Night Live satired the U.S. Senate hearings for the impeachment of Donald Trump in this weekend's cold open. The nine-minute sketch was tout as the trial you wish happened and featured Alec Baldwin as President Trump, Hint Thompson as TV jurist Judge Greg Mathis, Kay McKinnon as Senator Lindsey Graham, and Cal Mooney as the fictional Brooklyn attorney Joe Pesci played in the comedy film My Cousin Vinny. Mathis says, we're calling witnesses because that's how a damn trial works, bringing in John Bolton, played by Cicely Strong, to testify. Bolton says, the thing I saw President Trump do and say made me deeply worried about the future of democracy. Asked why he is only coming forward now, the former National Security Advisor replied, because I'm a messy bitch who loves drama. Bolton then said his tell-all book was available for pre-order on Amazon. Presidential candidate Joe Biden's son Hunter was called as the next witness. P. Davidson pretended to be the younger Biden, rode into the courtroom over a hoverboard and vape. Biden declared, my schedule was wide open. Um, he said, the president just kind of pointed at me to distract from his old crimes, adding his current job is on a Brazilian money laundry company called Anapatismo. Trump arrived using a walker, insisting he's a very sick old man. He says, how could I withhold aid from Ukraine? I can't barely get around the house. Mathis wanted to know, are you trying to Weinstein me? Trump replied, in what sense? Because Harvey and I overlap on a few areas. Invited to give a closed statement, Trump said, What I've learned from this trial is that clearly nothing I do or say has any consequence, so I like to come clean about everything. He then admitted to butt-dialing Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, cheating on everything from taxes to golf to wives, and secretly loving CNN. Mathis found Trump guilty on all charges, fined him $10,000, and ordered him to say one nice thing about House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Trump said, fine, her body is an ape. Pamela Anderson has split from producer John Peters. The couple exchanged wedding vows last month. The first day of more than 30 years ago after meeting at the Playboy Mansion, the pair quietly reunited in recent months and married in Malibu less than two weeks ago. Anderson said to the Holly Reporter Saturday, I have been moved by the warm perception to John and my union. We would be grateful for you for your support as we take time apart to be reevaluate what we want from life and from one another. Life is a journey and love is a process. With that universal truth in mind, we have mutually decided to put off the formalization of our marriage certificate and put our faith in the process. Thank you for respecting our privacy. The star also confirmed the breakup to E! News. Peters has not publicly commented on the situation. Anderson and Peters were each previously married four times. Mystery author Mary Higgins Clark died in Naples, Florida. Her publisher announced she was 92. A statesman on the writer's website Friday said the cause was complications of old age. Clark penned 38 suspense novels, including Where Are the Children, A Cry in the Night, On the Streets Where You Live, Before I Say Goodbye, Weep No More, My Lady, A Stranger is Watching in the Lost Years, as well as four collections of short stories, the historical novel Mount Vernon Love Story, the memoir Kitchen Privileges, and the children's book Ghost Ship, and the magical Christmas Horse. She also co-wrote numerous other books along with her daughter Carol Higgins Clark and with author Alifir Burke. Many of her stories were adapted as TV movies. Clark was 92. Rapper Eminem's music to be murdered by is the number one album in the United States. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 charts dated Saturday is Halsey's Manic, followed by the late Matt Miller's Circle number three, Roddy Rich's Please Excuse Me for Being Antisocial number four, and Post Malone's Hollywood's Bleeding number five. Running at the top tier are Selena Gomez's Rare, number six, Moneybags Yo, Time Serve at number seven, The Baby's Kirk at number eight, Harry Styles' Fine Line at number nine, and Billy Edish's When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go at number ten. The Will Smith Moore Lawrence action comedy Bad Boys for Life is the number one movie in North America for a third weekend, earning an additional $17.7 million in receipts. Box Office Mojo.com announced Sunday. Over five weeks, the film has earned $148 million domestically, coming in number two with $9.7 million since 1917, followed by Doolittle at number three with $7.7 million, Gretel and Hansel at number four with $6.1 million, and The Gentleman at number five with $6 million. Running up the top tier at Jumanji, The Next Level at number six with $6 million, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker at number seven with $3.2 million, The Turning at number eight with $3.1 million, 
Little Women at number 9 with $3 million, and The Rhythm Section at number 10 with $2.8 million. And that was your entertainment report for Monday, February 3rd, 2020. My, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R A Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all. <laughs>